So I'm going to start. <clears throat> I'm reading from lesson, <clears throat> excuse me, lesson 350. Miracles mirror God's eternal love. To offer them is to remember him and through his memory to save the world. What we forgive becomes a part of us as we perceive ourselves. The Son of God incorporates all things within himself that you created him. Your memory depends on his forgiveness. What he is is unaffected by his thoughts, but what he looks upon is their direct result. Therefore, my Father, I would turn to you. Only your memory will set me free, and only my forgiveness teaches me to let your memory return to me and give it to the world in thankfulness. As we gather miracles from him, we will indeed be grateful, for as we remember him, his son will be restored to us in the reality of love. Okay, so I, I'll begin. So as I, as I said last week, and also uh, I said myself a better mic, so sometimes I feel like I don't hear anybody, so then I start speaking louder and uh, just give me a hoi if I'm pushing it, because normally I'm very chilled the way I speak, so you can hear me fine. Okay, great. So... <clears throat> For me, the number one thing in the Course of Miracles comes at the very beginning when he says, seek only experience. He didn't say seek experience. He said, seek only experience. And do not let the theology to hold you back. Uh, there's a great danger. We had a few example lives who begin to kind of give long speeches on the course of miracles and then people begin to copy that now everybody thinks that they need to talk about the course of miracles and the psychology of it and whatever but it's really just like no 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 what's the experience what does the every word do to you like so jesus set up this whole book full of words that already fully manifested in us maximally but we if our feelings are deadened we actually just thinking those thoughts but the experience might be lacking so uh, one thing that i found really useful was take one word and fully experience that like for example seek only experience so what seek say the word seek what is that seek yeah and see if you can fully allow yourself to manifest that word within your feeling self like what is it seek you say seek and there is a feeling coming to uh, manifest to you or show you what that really means right so the more you stay with that word the more you become that word, you know, this is the thought become flesh, you know, you got to feel it all the way to your little toe to have an experience. Yeah. What does the word only means, right? Seek only. What is that word? What's the meaning of that word? Only. Yeah. Seek only. And then, most of all, what does the word experience mean? Experience, right? And this is where it's really important, like 
what is experience? If you could look it up in dictionary, you will have so many pointing to an actual feeling, to a living, to, to near life experience, like I call it. You, like you suddenly say a word and it ignites your whole self. You become, you become an expression of that one word, right? Experience. So then when you do your lessons, you know, you take a lesson, you know, I feel the love of God within me now. So say I, who? I, who is that? Who is I that, that it says I, yeah? So you actually get in touch with that I am that experience, which is just the beginning, yeah? I, and then feel, again, feel, what's the word? Feel, feels like, feel, I feel the love of God doesn't say I think the love of God within me now. It's a feeling thing. And then when we step back and let that experience take over, <laughs> you might be nicely surprised that it dislodges this little thinking thing completely to smithereens. And you're just sitting there in this exquisite light. You know, I feel the love to what the love and also we have so many generally there is so many labels on the word love that probably none of what love really is um, they are you know did i say correctly it's like uh, you know what is love if you have a friend and you go into this diet kind of thing and you go, hey, what's love? Well, love is, and then you say your five cents worth of what you think it is. But, you know, you can never really name it. So what are you really looking at? All the things that love is not. Because when you see what love is not, then you will not give it such a great value. And then when you empty out all these ideas of what love is, then the love of God comes in. And it's like, it's a, it's earth shaking experience where the mountains move and everything begins, you know, <laughs> the lava, the golden lava is to erupt from your rear, from your lower extremity and begins to, feel you with this whatever you call it kundalini experience but it's definitely it's a moving thing it's a movement a movement is life so my emphasis on the word feeling is like a number one i would even say dare to say that this is a course in feeling because jesus from the very beginning says just slow right down now every time you say a word your will your feeling body wants to give it a an experience of a meaning of it if you speak too fast even like reading the lesson just like done done the lesson no you haven't like you there's no way your will which is much slower even if I label it as anything, much slower than this crazy thinking that's going on upstairs. So we need more time for each word to show us what it truly means. That's why Jesus says from the very beginning, slow, right, down. Now, I tell you this, if you want a funny practice, try speak and think very slowly. And immediately your will, your feeling body has more time to manifest the meaning of what you are really saying. So, it kicks you more out of your visual and auditory mode, more into your aesthetic expression, which is the feeling. I'm not denying thought here at all. I'm just saying those two need to marry in the heart at all time. 
So we have a thought, the feeling comes to manifest it, and the love, the heart, ignites. And that makes a wholesome experience, yeah? So really one of the blocks to love's presence is the denial of feeling. Like I said last week, the word mind is often associated with that little thinking mechanism that's kind of between our eyes somewhere. But that's not what it really means. It means our whole self, a thought and a feeling joined in the heart. Yeah? To give a full experience. So, um, for example, I always try to do a lesson 108 and I was just thinking some ideas and then I was offering it to everyone. But try it this way, you know. What is it that you want to have right now? And this is just a practice, just like a lesson in A Course of Miracles. Like, what do you want to, what do you think you're lacking right now, right? What's the... What's the sensation? What's the feeling that's not there that you would love to have, right? So this course, one of the uh, lesson from 108 says, well, take one of those and begin to offer it onto others, right? So if you want to have, let's say, a peace, peace of mind, peace, yeah, a little peace. So first you have to feel it. Because just to give a thought, it's just like, hey, I love you. Do you feel it? No, right? Some of you might, but yeah, it has to be an experience. So we have to feel that, allow the feeling to feel first. And now see if you can allow yourself to have more of that feeling and keep stepping back, allow that feeling to be. And then when you feel it and you're like in a peak of that moment, in time where you have an exquisite feeling of a peace of mind, you go to everyone, I offer this feeling. And if you do that without effort, you have to feel this energy as if coming out of you from your whole self, not just from your mind, you know, in my mind, but from your whole self, your, your little toe is shining that, you know, your knees or your legs, you know, <clears throat> your organs, everything in you that's even physical appears to emanate that quality. So then more you give it, more you have it. And as you experience, that's how much you know you gave it. This exercise can come to a point of an unbearable lightness of being because if you begin to give it totally, it will just reverberate every cell and elevate your body to a speed of light that hopefully you haven't experienced before. Because as it says, you know, the peace of God is, is an experience that's incomparable to yesterday. So some of you guys who already know light, are you having the same light that you had yesterday? <laughs> or is it a brand new thing? It's like today there's a new light, right? And you feel it, it comes to you, it's given. You step back, it's given. And then you step back and you give it in order to sustain it not just to have a momentary experience, but to have that sustain love's awareness, which is always, yeah? You walk the talk. Simply, you know, you turn off the camera and your presentation face is off and you're still smiling. You're still in your light, in your, your heart is reverberating. You might even find that your heart is not in the chest, that, the heart is much, much lower and wider and more like an unimaginable radiance. 
that is always renewing itself into brand newness. So when it comes, it's like it takes you over. It makes you feel yummy, you know? You begin to vibrate in the areas of your body. And, you know, in that sense, body is this learning device that's demonstrating constantly, what are you putting out? What's your chemistry showing you? It's the alchemy of expression. So all of this is um, just pointing to actually an experience that I can talk about until cars come home, but is it happening? Is it happening in you now? You know, that's what we need. And in that is the sharing. It's like, if I feel, you know, I, I don't see you guys privately much, but I see any sometimes. And there is just this, you know, we just drop into this place that is not much to be said. But there is everything that is felt, you know, and it kind of when you feel it, there's one thing that it does and it does consistently, it puts a smile on your face, you know, and if it's not putting a smile on your face, then it's the mind will never put a smile on your face. Even if you say joke, it's just a joke. But when this experience comes, it smiles you like nothing else can smile you. And it's not necessarily a green. It's just this quiet recognition that you connected to yourself and therefore connected to the wholeness. So being in unity. And then you feel it. And then you feel it. And then it stays. It stays as a constant reverberation of your particular texture of, you know, of Annie or Kevin or, you know, Teddy, whatever, you know, whatever, you, whatever your thing is, like we all have these amazing gifts and, um, and what are they? And are they being given? Because if you don't give, you, know, you deprive yourself of, of the gift of the love of God that's living within now. It's not like one day. It's happening, it's a now thing. So, I don't know, maybe we open it to some questions on the subject, if there are any. Um, because I feel like I'm raving about something in here. <laughs> well, I'd say- There's one thing. As, as you're raving, Cole, like, you know, it's almost, it's all, it's like an invitation for us to join you in that. So it's like having a guide to take us into that experience. Um, and so I often find that very helpful, like to some of the guided meditations, because it does, it's just yeah. like Kevin, we were doing the lessons recently and Kevin was saying, I find it really hard with the lessons because you read it all and then you've got to remember all these steps to do. So we went through the other day and I just did one line and mm, waited. That's so, it. You know, we could apply that part before moving yes. on to the next part. So as you're Absolutely. speaking, you know, like, I don't know whether anyone else, but I'm using it to help open up to that experience that you're pointing to. Yeah. And that's really the purpose if we are coming together to enter into the experience that you know, we have, you're like the voice of God speaking to us and saying, you know, just come with me, follow me. And here you are. So, yeah, that's exactly where it is at. It's like um, if we join in feeling um, like I um, in my men's group, we run these very far out practices. And, and one of them, let's do it, Annie. Put your mic back on. Yeah. And let's do this because this is, this is very powerful. Say... So if I'm looking at you, right? Yeah, I am receiving and I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna give you my feel of you, right? Right? So 
I am receiving the gift of your radiant love and your dedication together. Yeah. And it just makes me want to, uh, you to know that thoroughly and profoundly. You feel it, Annie? <laughs> Look at Annie. She just had whole face just changed, right? It softens. It becomes radiant. It oozes. It goes deeper. It might even hit some emotionality, which is lovely, but we, we're just giving the full experience of what it is. Now, Annie, how did that make you feel? We're going to name it just for fun of it. Um, probably for me, it, I just feel, like you said, there's a softening and a relaxation yes. and just like a sink, a more of a sinking in. Great. And how does that make you feel? Um, not sure how to answer that more than the way I did. Great. Great. That's good. Good. And now just look at me. We're doing that as an exchange kind of thing. It's like, what is the quality that you get from me right now? What's the quality? I said, more like a good so right thing now, this I the quality of joy and radiance, and there's a sense of almost just like this expansion, like right. this love of love, and as that love loves it's like there's just an expansion and a spaciousness yes. and a enveloping and embracing of everything that's it and if everyone who can see you right now would definitely like put your hand up if you notice that we have dropped into a slightly slower realm of expression that's not so mental and it's got no curriculum of some kind it's just simply sharing, sharing what is in this moment, you know, and then, and then we keep going, you know, like, um, <laughs> you know, and actually I wanted to say something about when you get to this experience, it always, always will smile you, even if it's just a tiny little smirk, but it will always smile you. There's one thing that I often do particularly my man's group, I go, hey, gentlemen, just when we go in a meditation, just put a little smile on. It's not going to hurt your lips, you know, and just just put a smile on. Actually, funny enough, that smile, it works both ways. You either have an experience and put a smile on your face or you put a smile on your face and you begin to get the reflection of your feeling body that, hey, I'm responding to this smile. Your feeling body goes, hello, I, I too want to be your friend and I too love you because it's not only about loving our feelings and being in harmony with our feelings, but what if it's the other way around? What if the feeling is the main part of us and this whole other thing, the upper part, the emotions and thoughts, uh, uh, you know, maybe not, <laughs> not as main part of us as the feeling. What if it's that way? And do your feelings love you? You know, like one day my feelings just went like, oh, you've been so dedicated to my well-being. I freaking love you. And that ignited my heart like nothing ever. <laughs> and... This is where it gets really beautiful as I was doing a Slovakian podcast on lesson num number 91. And I don't know if I said anything from that lesson, but there's one thing that happened in there was that, I, you know, when you look at it as an electromagnetic field, yeah, un uniting field, there's this like, we have this plus, which is our thoughts and we have minus, which is our feelings, right? And if you don't have the minus, your heart, imagine your heart is like a bulb. So you all the, all, all the time be putting a plus into this bulb, but it can't lead up. Why? 
because it's missing the minus. You know, for a light to go on, we need to have two, you know, in a plus minus, and then boom, we have light. The what same thing with the heart. And the problem we have that we are, I've seen a lot of it, that cause the miracle goes into the head because the magnet is not ignited. And when a magnet kicks in, the light comes on and this, this mind just turns off. And suddenly there is zero thoughts, zero. Like not even a, a thought that, oh, I'm not having a thought. It's just all vanishes, yeah? Why is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The whole thing vanishes. That, you know, that part of us that thought they had to accept feelings, that in itself is unreal. <laughs> but we just give it a benefit of a doubt. We just give it a little chance to say the last words, like amen or something. <laughs> and and just let, let the feeling take over. You know, I feel the love of God with me. What would you rather have? Head full of thought, or feel the love of God within you now. I mean, seriously, answer, you know. <laughs> it's like, same with the peace, you know. You want peace or you want some other experiences of human life, no matter how seemingly exciting or sad, you know. You want the peace of God or something else, right? So it's really about this stepping back and letting this um, will to basically ooze. It's an oozing thing. Yeah. And he's having an oozing experience right now. <laughs> your, your mic is off, Annie. The light's hitting my fur balls. <laughs> you wait when it hits your uh, your inner thighs, you know, or your your ankles, it's you know. Get past the fur balls that break up the fur balls in the center. <laughs> it's like you know, like I think I think the deepest teaching now is like unless you have the light coming out of your eyes, you know, you haven't really been accomplished yet. <laughs> you, you know, like at some point this course will undo you, and you can say, "I've graduated." You know, like, are you a graduate or you just want to study this thing forever? And you can study it and be good at it and write amazing articles and send quotes every day out there on Facebook to awaken the world that you made. <laughs> but it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's only you can be undone because it's only your world that needs to be undone. And one, it's, once it's undone, this uh, this whole thing is over. And then you then you give your course of miracle book to your to your you know passerby, whoever's going by. You're like, hey, you want to read this, or you just want to just join, and that's all to it. <laughs> so yeah, it's all about this experience, guys. Like it's seriously the number one thing. Like Jesus said. Seek only that. So coming back to what you were saying about reading a lesson, right? This is, a, this is one of those barriers, I would say. You read along and suddenly you go like, oh God, yeah? It hits you deep, right? Whatever the sentence that worked for you just suddenly hits you deep. And you go, oh, I got to finish my lesson. No, 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 no. You're done. <laughs> You now stay there. Don't, don't come back. <laughs> it took you where you're supposed to go. And don't come back. Just, oh, 
I've done my lesson. You might just open up the first sentence and go, okay, I'm done because you did the thing. And then you can open up an hour later in case you shut it down. Because let me tell you, it's always a shutdown. You know, the light is there always. And if you're not experiencing it, not experiencing it only and only because you shut it. You close the door, and you decided you're gonna work it out. But there is none to work out. There's like, open the door. <laughs> it's like, you know, you say, Teddy, if you wanna put your mic on, let's close the door. <laughs> but it's just like that, it's like open the door. Like the door is that way, right? And you know, how many times Jesus says in the lessons, if you really thoroughly read the lesson, he says, he often points us down that way. He actually does. He goes, go below the clouds. Yeah, and he says, sink down. He often says, sink down. Yes. And, and it's, it's as you sink down, it's as if then you feel yourself elevating up. Beautiful. Because it is, there's that, the block, say, would be like, you know, almost like in the center and like that the, the love, the fear above yields to the love below. Yes. And it washes it away. Yes. And then comes that other, other extreme where when that begins to ignite, can you stay with it? And this is why he gives us these lessons every hour or every half an hour. So get used to this light. See you later. Get used to this light. See you in half an hour. Get used to this light and stay there for maybe a tiny bit longer. Thank you. See you later. So it's like he it gives us this constant... I tell you, one of the best investments I've ever made was to get an application of a Course of Miracles that has a timer in it. And this was six years ago. And I realized I have never in my 30 years experience, or more than 30 years experience with Course of Miracles, I've never really done the workbook up until then. Because when he said, you know, do it every half an hour, every hour, at four o'clock in the afternoon, I go, oh shit, my lesson. How many of you can relate to that in any way? Yeah, the world is designed to take you away into its grip, right? So here is this little timer that goes tiddly do, and you go, ah. You can be in the middle of a conversation, you go, wow, I would never remember to apply this lesson in this moment, you know? And I tell you, that was the day. That was the year that that the way I experienced myself it could go completely undone. I didn't even do the whole year. After about six months, it was like a bingo. You know, that the light had become so intense. It became so intense, but I could stay present for it. So that's another subject to do with, with uh uh with life experiences, can you stay present for it or do you run away? Do you shut the door, you got too much light, yeah? And you know what, this light, extremely intelligent. And you can say, you know what, it's too much, this light. Can I have a little bit less? Guess what? Bing, the door will just shut exactly to the, to the level the where you can feel good. And you can find the sweet spot. It's like a sweet spot. You just run this light. It's doing you nicely. You don't have to overcook it. You don't have to have not enough of it. You just find it's like, what is the light that feels good to you? That what? That feels good to you. Yeah. And that's another thing that I just... I'm watching Annie because she seems to be the biggest one on the screen. <laughs> uh, see, look how quiet she's just gone. And you know why? Because she's not looking up. There's also this danger of going and thinking the light is about. That's, that's, a bull, that's bullshit. The light is not about. God is not about. I love those Course in Miracle teachers who, who just forget and they point to the sky when they talk about God. I'm going like, hello, haven't you read the book? There is nothing outside you, <laughs> right? 
it's not it's not above it's actually you know of course there's not below either but but you know it's more this way you know can you stay present for it so let's talk about present what is present Because that was also an exquisite subject that I actually learned through the work of David Data because they, he put us in front of people and say, okay, stay present. But let's check how present can you be under certain circumstances. Huh? And we learn how to be grounded in our body and stay present and get feedback on our presence, right? Because if your presence is untrained, these feelings will come up. And you will not be able to stay present for them, right? And you will zoom into the little mind and tell yourself some story like you're thirsty or you're hungry or you need to now go. You know, I often feel with people like they get closer to their heart, to their real experience of something. And they go, oh my God, I really have to go now. It's like, hang on a second. You didn't have to really go five minutes ago. <laughs> but there is this intensity that comes on. and we got to get used to that intensity because this light is not, it's not just a little shimmering thing. That's why if you go to teacher's manual, he says, you know, there's somewhere, I think it's 26 or something where he talks about, uh, you know, is it possible to, what's that one? Um, So to, is it possible to have this sort of like experience of God, you know, on a persistent thing, you know? It says, usually not. Why? Because you can't stay present for it. So it's like, it's, like I say, like you learn how to stay present for the light. And you stay there and you stay there and you go, oh my God, this is so intense. But I'm there, you know? And then when it's too much, you just go, hey, okay, enough for now. But eventually it becomes a constant flow what any um it's the same as the um seeming discomfort the discomfort and the feelings that arise too you know that inception of what we call anger or fear yep. arising um we block that off if we're not present if we don't you know we can catch that as its inception and be still in the face of that yes. and give it room and space and allow it I mean, Absolutely. Our thinking has to be off to have those feelings, but yes. we, but when we we haven't got mind training, we just go with that feeling and then blah 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 with it, right. or freak out even more or what have you. Rather than when there's that mind training of presence, mm -hmm. we we feel it as its inception. We're in touch with our feelings more, yes. and we can catch it and and be present for that too and and notice yes. okay i've chosen let me say let me say a, a, an important thing right now is that um oh gosh i just lost it oh nice um god it was so good it will come back <laughs> i see here we go so watch this there is times where, you know, what we think our feelings are, are not our true feelings. Feeling is not a thought. Feeling is a feeling. It's a different quality. We only have these two things. We have thoughts and a feeling as a basic structure. Those two igniting together create heart and that makes a kind of like, it creates this physical experience of it, right? So at some point, we still have this, what we call a feeling, yeah? Like some people say like, yeah, I have this particular feeling. So in that sense, you, there is a way to heal with it. If you're not past the core, there's like, like a crust around the feeling, just like there's a crust around the earth. And then there is a core or the, 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 the nucleus of the earth. Same in us, we have this core of a feeling. And, you know, not many of us as yet have come to in, get in touch with this part of ourselves. That's a pure feeling. It hasn't got two feelings in it. It's just one 
<laughs> one feeling, one massive expression, right? But if we're not there, then let's deal with the crust because if you don't get through the crust, that's the block, yeah? The crust around the feeling is a block. And those are the labels we layered on a feeling. So if you say, you know, give me a feeling somebody that you have a problem with. What's your specific feeling? Anybody would like to join in on this? Then we could run this because this is very powerful. How to heal with a feeling that you're not actually having a good relationship to? Go. Okay, I've got one where I can feel it that it's like it's project like there's a, there's a defense if feeling against a projected idea so it's like right. i can think of someone and i'm yeah. like going okay. like that and i can't even access that core you know i i i've, I've I'm moving yeah, away, you go like up. I'm avoiding yeah. it. I can't even kind of access the the part where yeah. that the grip is because I'm going like that too yeah. much. So I can't even get down to the feeling. Yeah. So you begin to say, hello, you, the grip. Hello. I want to connect to you. That's all. Just start with that. Hello. If it's too much, step back, take a couple of breaths, survive, revive, survive. <laughs> yeah. And then go, hello, I, I'm freaked out about you. You really spin me and talk to it. You know, say, say something to it. So, hello, hello, attention. Hello, grip. I want to get to know you so we can ungrip you or find out what made you and how can we, you know, how can we loosen this up so I can be back in the flow again? It's that simple. That's like a Holy Spirit saying, hey, you know what? Let's find out what it is. Can you do that? Okay. <clears throat> So then that was really helpful because it's like I had to start right out. Like, you know how you say the crust? Beautiful. Like I had to start Perfect. right out there on the crust and start. Excellent. Because I couldn't, because I'm trying to get into there straight away. Yes. I can't because the crust is too, there's too much defense there as the crust. You said something really important right there. I wanted to get in there. Guess what? That which is, you will call in there, doesn't want you there. Because the mind that it's still doing something, it's not welcome in these places yet. So that's the training of the mind. You train your mind so this downstairs goes, come in, I take you in. You can't just force yourself in. That's like a rape, you know? So you actually have to, okay, I'm doing something where this is not taking me in. And you just wake up every morning and you say, from a distance, you say, hello. Now, there's one thing that's very important in this feeling thing. Lots of people go, go into that feeling. Guess what? The feeling doesn't want you in. You're much better off. I'll step back and let this feeling inform me of its, of its karma drive, whatever it is. You go to step back and give space and safety to that feeling to actually even reach you because at some point you shut it down and you think you shut it down just like that you actually speared it down in some way so this feeling is so hurt that it doesn't want to do anything it just wants to protect itself it's got a good knot there and that knot doesn't want to let go because you're like yeah how do i know you're not gonna screw me again and let me tell you this is the original cause of the feeling. It open up and it's in its full openness, it receives a smack instead of love. And you can mentalize it until cows come home. The feeling has to go through its own thing. It has to evolve until it can go, okay, and now I trust this mind that's trying to reach me. 
I'd say there is some judgment release that could be more helpful in there of, you know, there's some, there's some force that, that this not is going, I'm not opening to you. So with the feelings, you really just want to have the feeling to welcome you in. And for that, the mind has to be prepared to have a genuine loving attitude towards feelings. Make sense? Yeah, it's really helpful for me because, yeah, like I try to go into uh, and allowing that center feeling rather than allowing, first of all, that outer one that's going yes. and don't go mm -hmm. there. So having to meet yes. that first and then that starts yes. opening to be able to get moved towards the center more. Yes, because that above, the light above is not necessarily the most loving thing, uh, uh, you know. Uh, it's a popular opinion that light, light is above and it's higher self. Higher means somewhere like higher on a, on a uh, vertical axis, right? Well, for there me, that it's imagery. really just there's judge, there was so much judgment that there was yes. such a split off that, that there was just yeah. so much pushed down. Um, so it really, it wasn't light. It was just judgment. Just, that's it. And, and yeah, it was sphered down. That so that's split. It. So you, know, you wake up in the morning, you go hello, and you're sending a kiss. You know, just like hey, I just want to be your friend. And if that takes you a few months, you're doing great because you are preparing this place that it can actually open up to you. I mean, ultimately, it's really about this feeling like that it's the mother of everything. You know. When she, when she opens up, she begins to take you in, you're in for a ride. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing that happens. And that's the whole bottom opens that Kundalini or whatever you call it, the lotus flower opens at the bottom of your, what you call the physical experience. And it begins to flow upwards and flow upwards and flow upwards, right? But if the crust is in there, Hey, Jesus says in the course of well, it's like, hey, there is a barrier that needs to be removed. What do you think that is? It is the thoughts. So we're working with the thoughts. But at some point, are you present enough in the loving acceptance to your feelings? And most of the feelings are just, um, most of the feelings are just a mental attitudes in the mind even if you call a feeling um, a name it's just a mental thing what you think is going on down there eventually when you begin to transform these dark feelings like rage or sadness or grief when they actually be, start feeling the loving acceptance of your mind of your thinking mind yeah they will begin to loosen up and open up this grip and that is the barrier to love's presence and i don't think there is much more except that when i begin to sit for long periods of hours in this expression of let's say pure joy only then i saw another level of imprints or or uh, or the blocks they were saying, well, who do you think you are, for example, that you could be shining like this or that you could be in so much joy, you know, while other people suffer. And we're like, wow, I never seen these ones because I was always looking at the negative feelings. And now suddenly this beautiful, exquisite expression was coming and I was running into the next layer of crust that was saying, hey, this is not okay to be this happy. It's not okay to be... Yeah, and I'm going like, where has this come from? Yeah, but until I was in that light for a long period of hours, I didn't even know I had such thought patterns that would be stopping it. That's so a little bit more complex when it comes to feelings. That's what really important to say that, um, Cole, because um, those those ideas do come up, and it is this thing. I was doing the lesson the other day when we were doing the lesson, and. Mm -hmm. And the more light you you 
that's your mind's more light the more you yeah. get to see you know so yeah. it's like we're so crowded when we first start there's hardly any light to even see what the blocks are but the more light that's in our minds then the more clearly we can see yeah. and the more, the, the more subtle the blocks get too and we can well, see the subtlety yes. of them we really need to look at this thing that course in miracles is a mind training right the mind training he actually says somewhere in a chapter nine they're like i can't even give you an idea of your heart because you would destroy yourself you would not be able to stay present for the last presence you know I, he says i can't give it to you right because he's still trying to train our mind it's actually even with the lessons he kind of dips us in and dips us out dips us in and dips us out he doesn't take us all the way yeah because when he starts going you start going all the way you're gonna start dancing you know you start you're gonna start expressing physically like you've never expressed before you're gonna be taken to an experience that's never been before if your experience is similar to yesterday <laughs> you're you're living in the past again as light right so it's all about you know learning to dislodge this rigid mind it's a mind training i was also very lucky to come across a manual i don't know if this is cool to bring it in but this made such a huge difference for me when i discovered a similar channel material or righteous well and i'm not here to promote it in any way but it's like a course in miracles for feelings and i guess that's why i have a lot of understandings around feelings because when the feelings begin to express themselves i was sitting there going like oh my god what is this but i had to have something and it was very interesting because i had this like an awakening blah blah but in that awakening i thought i was complete however my feelings and my emotions kept dragging me back and i go how come i've got this wholesome experience you know and i still get triggered why am i getting triggered and it was like i had to have that experience just to see that actually below me is something else that there is this exquisite part of us called the will that has not really been even acknowledged much and suddenly it opens up and it was like first there was an awakening of the upper and then there was an awakening of the lower and only then there was a birth of heart because you have to have the mother you know i really got that idea of virgin mary because it's a virgin thought virgin feel i think about virgin feeling a feeling that you've never have had a chance to have yet now we have this golden mind under us under us of these treasure houses that god given us what well, we haven't unpacked those presents yet right i mean if you look at the whole idea of of christmas i think i mentioned did i talk about it last week it's like what's the idea of christmas you have this christmas tree right so that's your body if you're on the top of that christmas tree is a star but that's your healed mind right when that healed your whole tree leads up yeah you begin to reverberate as light right and what's under the tree yeah present and when you find you find this present and you slowly unpack it and it begins to give you experiences of something brand new yeah presence and present very similar word so you actually getting it's just a metaphor of something that you haven't had before it's a surprise yeah and you unpack this will you open this will and then there is this exquisite virgin light the virgin mary the the feminine light suddenly gives you a gift like you have never received it's a similar thing when man and woman when man is truly present for a woman what does she do well she opens her heart you know and when she does that she will emanate a quality of light unheard of 
Black women are not understood yet. And we think, oh, this is none of this is real. Bullshit. It's totally real. Because I have, I have stood in front of hundreds of women in the practices where we opened up to a totality of human experience. It was unlike anything I've experienced, including Course of Miracles, right? It was just beautiful. And it was right there with this woman just oozing her core. We went through the crust, we went through the layers, and we'd gone to the core of her, and she just exploded. And then stay present for that beauty and for that radiance without, without flinching, without running away, yeah? So men have a lot to learn yet how to be present. And women also have a lot to learn how to show her their true feelings. And if we have these barriers to these true feelings, well, where are those feelings? Where is that core? Where is the nucleus of the feelings that wants to fully express itself like a flower and say, hey, have a look at my seeds. Have a look at my, uh, my um, ultimate potentials. And this ultimate potential is, lives in you already. It's already there. It's just unseen. And the minute it's seen, bingo. It, it opens up. And that's the holy relationship. Nothing special about it. It's holy. It's you, 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 you manifest your wholeness. You stay present as a man. She manifests her pure feminine radiance and you too birth a new heart between you two. And that's really the birth of Christ. You know, are you, are you birthing Christ between each other or are you having, you know, a lovely conversations or some grievances going on? So just, just for a second. But let's go to this ultimate potential, right? Just imagine right now, and forgive me <laughs> if it's not so, but hey, let's, let's begin to get this idea that we're going to birth this incredible love between us as we are, Dave, you know, Michelle and Teresa and, and grateful Kevin and Allison. Yeah, hello, guys. And shall we, shall we do it? Do you, do, you, do you want to birth this new thing, that new Jesus that we are waiting for, the second coming of Christ between us now? When is the other time? Are you guys ready or, or shall we just read a lesson, you know? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, look at Michelle. She's like smiling now, softening, because she's feeling this. Michelle, are you feeling this? Yeah. You're feeling where I'm coming from, yeah? And you know it's true. You know, it's a totally doable, even in this world, it's so doable and so exquisite. You know, guys, I don't wanna brag, but with my girlfriend, we go into these lights together and we're constantly birthing this. You know, I'm 63. I don't think I've ever had a relationship like that. We are birthing Christ every minute every minute she goes call is this gonna get any more intense i said baby we're just starting <laughs> yeah this is totally totally possible yeah we just got to let ourselves open up this other part of ourselves because without feeling you know it's just all here in here in my mind a god in my mind forget it Yeah, forget it. It's just not going to be there, no matter how much you try. And you know what? It's the word and your vibration tells me that it's here. We want to get out of here and expand the whole self within. And then remain present for it. It's like when I talk, I'm constantly with my feeling. And when I go a bit off, my feeling goes like, ding dong, <laughs> you're losing me. And I go, okay, back to my feeling. Oh, there you are, hello. Puts a smile on my face, makes me reverberate again. And I begin to ex experience this elevation of the form. The form can be fully elevated because what we did, guys, we just slowed ourselves down. We became too physical. And it's very difficult for us to now loosen ourselves again 
back into the, the speed of light. And that's all we are learning, just how to loosen up and how to ignite the will to vibrate again. So she can inform us of what the other gifts below the tree. What are the qualities that are available and, uh, and the endless gifts that this, this uh, tree has to offer and that God has placed for us just at the touch of a fingertip. And all you do have to touch it and it ignites into something brand new, never seen before. And if it's not happening, then the mind is rigidly holding on to. And let me tell you one thing, the mind, the ego knows that when these feelings loosen up and open, it will lose its power. And so it's gonna do anything not to guide you to your feelings. So if I say, hey, how are you feeling? You say, oh, I'm feeling sad. No, that's the ego rushing in, establishing its impotence there, right? That's not it. So if I ask you, how are you feeling right now? First, the mind rushing in. Second thing, you might, if you're lucky, get into more like an emotional state that you might be finding yourself in. That's not it either. As important as it seems, is not it. You wanna to get to that place that only feels. And unfortunately, it's been such a thing as like, let's talk about feelings, yeah? So people get together and they talk about feelings, but feelings don't express by talking. Thoughts express through words. Feelings express through what? How do feelings express? Experience. Not emotion, huh? Experience. Experience. Giving them space, they, allowance. Yes, but more, more than anything, they express by being felt. That's their main avenue of expression is being felt. So for example, in my man's group, we have these experiences where man drops into his real feelings and the whole group goes, oh my God, I fully get you. I'm, there is no words. It, it just it knocks the ego out. The fastest way to <laughs> abolish the ego, drop into your true feeling. How are you really feeling? A really feeling. And now you already know not to rush in trying to figure out what it is. You step back, let the feeling inform you. And when you set up this scenario where you're actually in a loving acceptance and presence to your feelings, they begin to talk to you in a way that you haven't heard for a long time, but it will be totally familiar to you. So as you say, as you see, uh, everything that's in the course I'm talking about, there's this voice that speaks differently. The feelings speak in a different voice, and the, but you've got to have this vision, yeah? Vision is like an awakening of a mind that can finally read these feelings. It's a presence that actually goes, oh, I understand this language of feeling, thank you. I have a question. The feeling... Yeah, go ahead. Um, you said like, a, like th it's not like a, going into thoughts about what you're feeling. Um, what I've always done is tried to identify the feeling with my thoughts. So like when I'm just yes. feeling the feeling, what am I doing there? Am I just feeling or am I identifying at all? Or you, you're just you're just trying to fit into the library of the of the mind and another thing where you can fit it into something that's already familiar. Right? So you're basically in some way not doing anything. Yeah. Because it's just it's just re rearranging the, the, the furniture on Titanic. The mind is sinking. And the feeling comes back, this whole thing vanishes. These important thoughts and these important thought structures and patterns we have, it will be gone. And instead, that will be something else. And that is the real presence. Yeah, I guess that, the real that's, something, that's something so alien to me. Because, um, uh, I don't know, I, I, I just started, like, 
maybe a month or two ago, just really feeling my feelings. And as of recently, it's gotten really intense. Uh, a lot of uh, emotions and energies are coming up. And, uh, yeah, I've been feeling... Like really I said, like... welcome it. Welcome it, because that's, that's what you want, right? You, you want those to be. You want to you wanna cry your eyes out. You know, you want to scream it out. You want to rage it out, you know? The, the Course says, you know, every twinge of annoyance is nothing but a, but a veil drawn across an intense fury, yeah? So this energy is so intense, but we judged it as negative. He dodged it as rage, but it's just love wanting to express itself. Because if you fully allow the rage to go without acting it out, it will just express itself and, and possibly not even hurt anybody or yourself. Yeah, if you have enough awareness in there, it will go just like, okay, finally the rage is coming. Finally my hatred is coming. Finally my, my grief or my guilt is moving out because when the light comes in it will push out everything that doesn't belong in there and this is one of the big things that happen that, that we we have experiences of love one two three days and then all the other stuff begins to come out and what do we do we go nah yeah and we stop it and with that stopping we're stopping that flow again and we go, wow, I just had this amazing three days. Or, you know, people tell me four months, I was just floating. But then it stopped. Why it stopped? Because it brought up something that's still sitting there, like some kind of karmic stuff or some heavy thoughts, heavy feelings. And we shut them down. And we, with that, we shut the whole will. And without the will, we just left it with this again. We just left with the mind. We're left with these false feelings and we look out and see world reflecting it back to us as people attacking us or having stuff with people, right? So instead, we're reversing this. We're going to use the world to trigger us. Once triggered, you go, thank you very much. Now I'm going to be present with my feelings. Now I'm going to see what they have to offer to me. And then they begin to grow and grow. And until, and one day you wake up and you have this exquisite light right in the middle of your groin, you know? It's just beautiful golden light just shining at you and pouring out this exquisiteness of itself. You know? So anyway, it's just my, yeah. I'm speaking of my experience there, you know? So Brendan, like, it's like, there's really only, like, if you spoke about it in, as energy, there's really only one energy you could say, but in the idea that we could separate that energy seemed to be split into two and the, what seemed to be called fear was then pushed down, you know, so it's on sitting on top, but all that energy has to be brought up and converted back into its natural state. It has to be brought back to the light where it's returned yeah. to home. So we're bringing that home, all that stuff that we've judged against and pushed down. We've got a the light. So the light starts coming in and it's going to hit all those places in our consciousness to bring up that, say, iceberg of what we called not love that's sitting below the surface because we're just, you know, on the surface of our mind seeing out here and it's kind of sitting below all that feeling and stuff and we're operating from up here. So the light hits consciousness. Mm. It's going to hit that iceberg of what we've called some form of fear, whether it's grief, anger, fear, depression, whatever, and it's going to hit that and start raising it up and we're going to feel that as whatever some form of experience yeah experience that's the stimulus response mm. response sort of that we talk about in the notes that's going to come up and we want to be still and give that space to that energy that we've called whatever to actually return and be brought back into its natural state 
So yeah, it's like I, an al- alchemical or transformative process. Yeah. This is like a, the for the past year, it's been kind of like the main thing that's been coming through for me from the spirit is feel your feelings and let things be. And even years and years ago, I had a dream of this beautiful angel with teddy bear necklace all sewed together. And, and she was like, just feel your feelings. And I, I, didn't, I never listened. Like, I was always running away from my feelings. It's still very alien to me. To, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I, it's not something I can understand on a mental level, I think. Like, it's something I need to just feel, like, is what you're yes. saying. Yes, feel. And there is a, like I'm saying, with the feelings, you know, some feelings, you just go, hello, I want to be your friend. You have, a, you have a loving attitude. It's like if I say to you, hey, Brandon, I want to be your best friend. Hey, how about we hook up with best friends? It's an invitation to a greater experience, experiment. You know, like, hey, what, what, what would happen if we're good friends? So imagine you're doing that thing with your feelings. Kind of like, hey, guys, I want to be your friend. I don't want to be your enemy. I don't want to spear you down. I don't want to control you. Can we find harmony? And there is a place for that because you don't want to be overtaken by your feelings feelings either you got to have this present and you have these feelings but there's a place where the feeling and the thought meet and that is the heart like i said you know you have to have the magnetic in order to uh, ignite you know electromagnetic field in, in order to turn on the light so there's your electro down the bottom is your magnetic and your heart is your light and then if you want to have that light from your heart constantly shining and you will feel it, I guarantee it, you, um, you need to have feelings constantly flowing, but no longer as what you thought your feelings were. Yeah, because all our ideas of feelings we have is ex- exactly what makes that crust, what makes the wall that we're running into. They just judge things. Eventually you will see that, that if you ask your sadness, for example, I say, hey, sadness, I've been calling you sadness, but maybe you're not sadness. What are you? And now you're receptive. Now you want to be shown and told what it is. And it begins to talk to you. It goes, hello, finally. (laughs) It's good to see you, my friend. You want to be my friend, you know? you, I want to join with you. So you unite your whole self, not just part of you. You can't just feel whole in here. It's got to be a full body experience. And it's just an idea. And you know, as, you, as, as this has been placed in, you're going to go, okay. And now you're going to meet feelings. But now you're going to go, Okay, I don't want to be your enemy. I don't want to control you. I want to have a new relationship to you. And the feelings will go, thank God. Finally, this guy is actually talking to us. And they're not going to trust you first because you have pushed them down. We all have pushed them down. It's, it's, a, it's like a normal. The world, that's what it is. We push down our feelings. And now the world is reflecting what in the subconscious but it's right in front of you all the time so you use anything that's happening something triggering you let's say i trigger you right now and you go how does it make you feel to what i said let's say right so now i already triggered you i've already done my job your job is now to go what is that that's a real true forgiveness if you want to speed up on your forgiveness that's the way to go You don't want to forgive the brother over there. You can do that until cows come home. He's an effect of your denied will. So he shows up and he triggers you. And then you got to go, what's my relationship to this feeling that he triggered in me? And then you will see that you hate that feeling in yourself. And that was splits you into camps. And that's how you make duality. That's how duality is made. You split yourself into two. Now you see everything as two. Once you're in unity, there's no way you can see anything as as separate. You see? 
You get first united in yourself. So here is the forgiveness, and it's very simple. Trigger, how does it make me feel? Find the real feeling, not just the reaction or emotions, but the real feeling. That's really the hardest bit. Once you have it, what's my relationship to that feeling? And you will see that that relationship is not good. And then it's only about healing this relationship to that feeling. Once you have a good relationship with this feeling, instead of feelings being like repulsing the mind, yeah, we're in a repulsion of ourselves, it turns around and two magnets go click. And you're in a genuine oneness, unshakable. Nothing can knock you out. I just, I like just I find I, I'm having so many feelings coming up. I'm not sure how to identify them. Okay, gi okay, give us one feeling. Um. Nice. Like pain. 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 Like pain. Like, like okay. a feeling of like pain. You, but you know, not, not physically. I, I want to I want to say something to you, Brenda. The need to identify the feeling is the ego's use of control, so it thinks it knows. It's like trying to name what the feeling is. It's putting it in a box and attempting to control it rather than just experiencing it and allowing it to yeah. be. So, so I don't need to identify the feeling. It, you know that that's what the ego has done. And so we can control ourselves. You know, we yeah. think we, we, the ego thinks it knows everything. So since we were young, we have a feeling and somebody, oh, that's because of this, or that's because of that. Yeah. And really, yeah. these thoughts mean anything. But as, as long as we think we know what the cause is, then we don't go looking for the real cause. We don't go looking within yes. ourselves. Now, there's really only one emotion and it's love. The nature of the illusion is, you know, the ego is in opposition to love. So it's love against love, and the opposition is the experience of suffering. It's not the feeling itself, it's the opposition mm -hmm. that is caused by the denial of everything being love that causes the pain and suffering. Mm. All we want to do is make allowance for what's occurring to us without the need to name it and ask, what's this for? And it, we, we, it'll either be love or it'll be for the healing of our mind to remember what love is. Mm. But the need to identify the feeling is the ego's attempt to control what's going on so as to help you think you know. And the, na the nature of what's going on here is we don't know, but we can learn. So I guess the so clarification of my question would be like, I don't need to identify my feelings, I just need to feel them. You need to feel them and also see what's your relationship to that feeling. Because what just to feel them that? is one thing, but you got to see that your relationship with that feeling is not going to be, just give me a second, Annie. This is really important. Actually, Teddy, let me, let me elaborate a little bit on this, because this is really good. What I normally do, I go, where is it at? And then the process itself will make a discovery in here that it's actually, this is the problem, not the feeling is the problem. You see the point? So I take what is and I go, hey, what's your relationship? Begin to communicate with it, hey? Tell it, talk to it, tell the feeling how you feel with it, yeah? See if you can accept it, which you probably want. And then comes a really interesting step. And that one is apologize to the feeling for denying it. And that's where the mind catches itself saying, Fucking, I'm not apologizing to a feeling. Who am I to apologize to a feeling? And that's when a, this catches the fact that it's, that's the problem, that this is the arrogant little ego that just controls and controls. But you know what? At that point, what happened, 
there's something even in the ego when like, oh fuck, I didn't even know I'm doing this. Like the shadow was here, it wasn't there, it was here. I had the shadow that didn't know that actually it was like an unconditional non-acceptance of feelings. That's all it was. But at least this has awakened to that knowledge that it was an unconditional denial of anything that to do with feeling because it knows that if, it's, uh, if it stops, it begins to accept feeling, it will vanish. What it didn't know that it actually vanishes into a good place. Well, you just said there that the shadow's up here and not down there. That uh, that made me realize something. Like, I, it's the it's it's the thinking that's the problem. It's not the feeling. Yes, yeah. bingo. It's exactly what Teddy was saying. The same thing. It's like here, this needs to wake up. But sometimes we need to go into that and go, hey, let's play with you. And ego goes, yeah, 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 let's yeah, play yeah. with me. And in that game. It goes, shit, I'm the one who, who's crucifying myself. You know, I'm the one that, you know, and it begins to wake up to saying, okay, fuck, I'm not going to do this again. And it changes its attitude. It changes its, its presence. Its presence kicks in instead of its little, you know, I am that kind of thing. You know, the idea that you shouldn't feel a particular way is what denial is. Like, you know, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. That's denial. Yeah. So so what I go back to is like the Holy Spirit accepts the ego judges and rejects, basically. So when we're listening to the ego, what we've done, when we've listened to that tiny mad idea, what we've done, we've used our mind against ourselves. So even, so in the seeming separation then we're constantly judging ourselves. We're constantly, the mind is judging itself and it's judging against everything. So if you seem to be an arrogant asshole, it judges that as wrong. Now, if you, if there was such a thing as a, an arrogant asshole, in your letting that be as it is without any judgment, it's like you're not going to have a problem with the arrogant asshole anymore because you let go of your judgment that being an arrogant asshole is wrong or right and it's the same with anything here so uh, letting it be without judgment the holy sure. spirit says forgiveness looks and waits and judges not and not. basically all we're being taught here is the same action of mind towards everything because the holy spirit accepts so to me, acceptance is more that allowance. It just lets it be. It sits, it waits, it judges not. So you come to, uh, to that feeling. Okay, so Brendan, you might have what this sensation we call pain. And again, there might be a defense against it. You know, Cole was talking about the crust, you know. Mm. So, you know, you might feel that. But if you look a bit and I'll go to the outer edges of that, there might be like a defense. So it's almost you allow that first, you know, you, you coming up to that and just waiting and judge and letting your mind rest into that outer crust for a moment. I don't know whether, can you sort of get a sense of that? Like if there is a sensation of pain or something, sometimes we might feel the sensation and it's helpful just to put your hand on where you're feeling it, just to bring some little awareness. But if there's a big defense, like I had with this grip thing, you know, it's like bringing, just right, waiting there, like on that outer circle, and then mm. the softening. And so you're just going up to the edge of the sensation, you could say, just coming, just bringing your mind, just letting almost your mind and your awareness rest into that sensation for a second and see what happens then and then there might be just a little bit of relaxation you the next thing can come up because a little bit of the layer of defense has been just given room and it's accepted it's allowed it's like um cole says you've come up and kissed it you've said hello you're welcome here i'm not going to try and get rid of you anymore i'm not going to push you down i'm trying to make you you're welcome come home sweetheart come home you're part of me i'm sorry mm. i pushed you away and tried to get rid of you but you're welcome now just come mm. home 
you know, like Just you're, a little willingness. you're being the father to all these feelings and and that we've given birth to through our thought of sensa our um, thought of separation, all the stuff mm. we've pushed and judged against. We're like we're the ones that have birthed them. You could say when we believed or took that tiny mad idea seriously. So now we're saying here come home sweetheart I'm sorry you know I've judged I've pushed it like to me it's resist not evil you know it's like all my thoughts and stuff I've pushed outside of me now I'm giving them a home I'm welcoming and welcoming them home they're my prodigal sons I'm bringing home because I was the maker of all that stuff I was the one that said you're not okay mm -hmm. in a sense when I listened to that tiny mad idea and took it seriously does that make sense? It also just come back up to the sensation. Yeah, allow the mm -hmm. sensation and just embrace it. That's it. Um, yeah, it, well, that's the, like the the uh, this is really hard for me to understand mentally, and I'm starting to realize that it's not something I need to understand mentally. And I've always wanted yes. to be that, like, to know and to understand things and be I'm a mental person, but I'm starting to realize that. And even the course says it's not about like yes. there's nothing to understand here. So you know what? Uh, and you know what? And now you understand that. You know, sometimes there's a denial of I don't know anything. Well, bullshit. We know a lot, actually. If we are one with ourselves, is in a vast knowledge of things. And now you actually know something very important. It's not that you don't know. You actually now know that that oh uh you know, what's the Holy Spirit is an intent to heal. You know, it's that inner something that, okay, I had enough. I want to heal this. It's this loving approach to something. And now you're becoming aware of it. And I think that's what just happened. You know something that's real. You know that you're now not going to keep rejecting yourself because unless there's all of you, until you have all of you with you, you can't really love everything with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength because most of your power is gone. If we deny our will, we are, we are just getting rid of, of that with which we can truly love. Yeah? It's like you decide you're going to love. Like you could do it like, hey, I'm just going to love my feelings. And it's going to like, look like a, a bit of an earth shaking thing it's gonna my attitude is it's gonna love like like if i say hey bro shall we shall we share love you know it's an invitation to a greater experiment hey do you want to feel love with another guy you know how is it two men feeling indescribable love that is beyond anything here we are you feel it Can you feel it? It's a decision. Like, do you wanna do you wanna feel love? Yeah. Do we wanna bring, do we wanna birth the little Christ between us, even here with all of us? Like we are a circle of atonement in which we say, hey, do we wanna feel the love now? And you just say yes. And then when you have this intent to love. The love will begin to manifest because God manifests everything for you. If you want love, you will have love. If you don't want to have love, you want to have lots of knowledge, then you will have that. But you might not have love, you know. But at the end of the day, we're going to go, hey, shall we do it? Let's do love. And let's feel really safe opening to love, you know. And there it is. Like you, your face begins to soften and you begin to smile. Is he go like a oh, fox? This is nice. I can actually see with another guy and feel love and keep feeling love, and it's not costing us anything, right? <laughs> and here we are. Hello, nice to meet you, right? And the, the more we stay in it, the more we're getting informed who I am and who you are. And I'm going like, hey, beautiful man, this is lovely to meet you. You know. We are course of miracle people. We love each other. And we're not arguing like who knows it better. Like fuck the course of miracles, man. At the end of the day, you can't bring it to the heaven. It's here and now. 
do we want to feel it together? You know, because right now you can start reading anything from the course, but hey, this is the moment where, where two, two souls, you know, begin to feel love and they become glad. They experience their oneness because I feel you, you feel me. And then hello, here we are. We begin to experience each other. And then suddenly, I don't know if anyone else feels it. Can anyone feel what has just happened? There was a tiny little glimmer of a pure, genuine, the guy still kind of got this gentle smile on. Boy, it was like thinking, thinking, now he's just sitting there going like, right? And it's like, it makes you glad, you know? To heal is to make happy. And so the little happiness comes in and you might still feel the pain and go like, hey, I haven't thought of my pain yet. No, but now we, we at least be establishing some genuine thing this is genuine like it's an invitation it's like hey do we want to be two strangers discussing course of miracles do we want to actually go to the end of the course of miracles when you graduate and you go hey she, can you feel the love you know i feel your heart i feel your heart i feel your good intent i feel your dedication and it delights me you know, and now we're sharing it and I'll speak it, you know, I'm not going to just pretend. And if I shut up, it begins to, um, <laughs> it begins to expand and expand and it's got no, this, the sky is not the limit of how much love we can feel. How's that? Yeah, thumbs up, huh? That's it. And now we're staying there and we're staying there and now it's birthing itself. It's gonna take a little gestation and little, little time until it evolves into complete full expression of God's love's presence here in the world, here with you and me and all the brothers that we also have an intent to join and love and be one with. I'd say amen to that. And it kind of brings that little smile, even if I look around this, Michelle's got this tiny little smile there going, yeah, this feels good. Kevin's like, <laughs> smiling. It's like, it just makes you happy, you know, to heal is to make happy. It's not like you're gonna be jumping up and down. It's like, oh, yeah, I can feel this. I have an experience where Jesus says, seek only that and do not let the theology delay because if we're not here, we're delaying. And can you feel how it's becoming, Brandon? I can see it in you. Can you see how it's become like a momentary, like a permanent thing? It's not, it wasn't just a little ta ta, but it's staying. If something feels good, yes. Yeah, wherever you are, I can feel you all the way to that place. We are definitely the joining, right? And we don't know each other. I don't know what you do, you don't know what I do, but hey, there we are. Two souls meeting in an elevator going, hello. And we didn't scold each other and we didn't argue about course of miracles. We were like, let's join. And that's all it took. It says, hey, let's meet. I want to be your friend. And it's the same thing with your feelings. Hey, feelings, I just want to be your friend. I had enough of this separation between you and what I think is still me. <laughs> I want to be one. And when you one with you, you one with everyone, guaranteed. The search for God is over because you find yourself. And if you are God, as God created you, are, you are God. I'm not saying you are the God God, but you are God as his son, you know, shining in a reflection of your day. <laughs> and then you feel gratitude, which comes as naturally. And one thing about love, it gives of itself. 
it just gives. It begins to ooze out. And anything that's vibrating similarly to it will join with it. Go like, oh God, love, yummy. Mwah. Here I am. Yeah. And this will not work without feelings. Because the feeling is that uniting field. You know, we feel the love of God within us now. If you want to have a feel of unity, you will feel it. You will not think it. It's not a thought. It's a thought connected to feeling. And that part of it all is something that it takes a little bit of getting used to. and now we're not just sitting there with eyes closed we're actually connected together you can feel the whole room is kind of joined and not fully on its way because what would you exchange this for a sense of unity with, you know. so thanks for that question because hey you took us somewhere with that like a real joining <laughs> mm. Bye, Teddy. Bye, Teddy. Thanks, Carl. That was um, I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like you put, you can't put your finger on it. That's a good sign, you know. Mm. You can't name it. You just like, oh my god, what just happened? Yeah, we got taken. It's like. Talk about Holy Spirit going, okay, guys, you want to try? Come. <laughs> you want to experience the second coming? 
All you have to do is come in and say, hey, I want to join. Yeah. So, Cole, you can... Anyway. Coming back next Thursday, is that right? Yeah, I'll be I'll be here next. If anything comes up for anyone that would like to talk about on this on this feeling, I don't want to put myself in some kind of position, but I really do love this feeling work, and and uh, it's been for me really the catalyst of it all. And so, yeah, I'm very happy to share about this in any way. And if you have anything arising, because it's at the end, it's very simple, but it can be a little bit intense because the light begins to, the feelings generally want to express and uh, they want to express all the time. If we didn't hold it down, we'll be in a constant flow, a constant Kundalini experience. It doesn't look like something you need to sit in a meditation for 20 years in order to get it. It just unplugs the, the source and then it begins to flow. And it's nothing, and you, it's incomparable to anything you ever read about it. Because if you read about it, it wasn't it. Because the, you know, the Tao that came to all is not eternal Tao. However, we, we're doing, we're just preparing thoughts to that for that experience to occur. And a lot of it has to do with feeling, which is, hasn't been so explored much. More like you know, you think you're in a therapy if you do, but it's actually the essence of the whole thing. And Jesus says it in the chorus in every sentence, but it's, he doesn't want you to go like, hey, feel something, and you go, oh my God. <laughs> so he prepares your mind gently, he keeps dipping you in, dipping you out, and one day you go like, oh, I can stay with it. So again, when you do your lesson, and you have that moment, you read, and you go, oh, that, that moment is just like, oh, like drops you in. It's like this moment, you just go like, oh, God, this is so beautiful. This is so profound. And then drop the book and stay in that profound moment for as long as you can. And notice what is that thing that will get you out of it. There will be a thought that comes in that says, oh, now I definitely need a cup of tea. And it takes you out. <laughs> you come back and you're not feeling that same thing. You left it. You yeah. left the home to explore something else. And at some point you say, I am not leaving from here. I'm staying home. I'm staying home. And who wants to join me in my home is so welcome and we'll stay there. We're not going to interrupt ourselves. But it's good to see what is it that takes you out. And that's the barrier to love's presence because something creeps in, a tiny med idea, I need a tea. That's a tiny med idea, right? Because you need nothing, you know? You're sustained by the love of God. And actually, if that really happens, you will stop being hungry, you'll stop being thirsty, you'll stop breathing, you know? <laughs> you'll just stop having all these needs because everything's provided. Because whatever is missing, you begin to give. If you think something's missing, something lagging right now, yeah, it's just because you're not giving it. And so you deprive yourself of it. Okay. Okay, thanks, Cole. Thanks very much for that. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you.